Hey, what's up everyone? Pratima here. So this is the new Neo 7, iQOO's latest mid-range phone for 2023. If we know one thing about iQOO is that they make solid gaming phones and this guy is no exception. But for a mid-range phone in 2023, people also come to expect a good overall experience in all departments. So I was really curious to find out if the iQOO Neo 7 is a phone that even someone who is not a gamer should look into. And spoiler alert, except for a few compromises here and there, this is actually a pretty well-rounded phone overall. So let me start the review with the star of the show, which is the performance itself. Here, the Diamond City 8200 might be a small upgrade over the Diamond City 8100, yes, but still an impressive one. The most important upgrade here is its 4NM fabrication process besides the overclocked CPU and GPU and everything else. I think MediaTek could have shaped this chip even prettier by going with the new ARM V9 architecture and TSMC's second gen 4NM process though. But for what it's worth, the 8200 is an absolute powerhouse. Be it CPU or GPU, this MediaTek chip scores higher in every benchmark out there against practically every chip you'd find in this price segment. In fact, its performance level is actually similar to the Snapdragon 888, but with much better thermals as it does not heat up nearly as bad as the 888. So this should not come as a surprise when I say that the iQOO Neo 7 is a total beast in the gaming arena. Even in something as resource-hungry as Genshin Impact, this guy manages around 57 FPS on average at high graphics. I uh, did come across some frame drops here and there and the phone's temperature does climb above 40 degrees Celsius after a while, but these are more than playable conditions. Not to mention, it's quite ahead of other Snapdragon 778G, 870 or Diamond City 1080 powered phones that you'd find in this segment. I also thoroughly enjoyed playing other not as demanding titles like PUBG Mobile, Apex Legends, RIP by the way, and a Mobile Legends at 60fps with the best visual quality and comfortable thermals. But since the Diamond City 8200 is a fairly new kid on the block, I noticed optimization issues in a few games. Asphalt 9, for instance, can't hit steady 60 FPS and settles to around 55 FPS instead. Whereas Injustice 2 is also locked at 60 FPS. The other high FPS games I tried was uh, Mech Arena, which ran at 100 FPS average at the highest settings. A powerful processor and a competent 3D cooling system aren't the only things that make the iQOO Neo 7 such an impressive gaming phone. iQOO has also borrowed a couple of gaming features from its flagship phones, such as motion control, which lets you run different in-game settings with simple gestures. And if you play a lot of FPS games like PUBG, then I am sure you are also going to love how IQ lets you set different levels of gyro sensitivity for the best recoil control and fast aiming. 4D game vibration is another sweet feature IQ hopes keeps you immersed by delivering precise haptic feedback that mimics in-game activities in real time. I really liked its implementation on the iQOO 11, but for some reason it didn't work that well here, with the phone often failing to figure out what was happening in the game. Besides all its gaming chops, the iQOO Neo 7 is also a dependable performer for your usual everyday tasks. The Touch OS experience is also pretty decent if you can look past some minor inconsistencies in the UI design. It can also be somewhat strict with memory management in the background, but you can easily adjust individual apps' power management settings. As for updates, iQOO has finally committed to three major OS updates and four years of security patches for its flagship phones, but on a mid-range phone like the Neo 7, the company is only offering two years of OS and three years of security patches. Likewise, I also think iQOO could have improved the design and build quality on the Neo 7, but um, it is pretty much a copy-paste of what we got last year. I uh, don't mean to say that it looks terrible or anything, but for starters, the Neo 7 has an all-plastic build material which does not feel that nice and premium on my hands. And like basically every other iQOO phone out there, this one also lacks an official IP rating. 
On the plus side, Aiku has done a decent job with the weight distribution and I quite dig its curved back with matte finish. But um, overall, I can't say that this is the most well put mid-range phone out there. Okay, getting to the display, you are now looking at a slightly bigger 6.7 inches AMOLED screen with all the goodies like a smooth 120Hz refresh rate, a speedy 360Hz dot sampling rate and more. As for brightness, it peaks at 1300 nits in certain HDR playbacks or 800 nits under auto brightness mode. That's not as bright as compared to something like the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, for example, but I can read stuff off of this screen even under direct sunlight just fine. Also, the factory color calibration was a bit on the warmer side in my unit, but you can adjust it by dragging the temperature slider inside the settings. Aiku has got you covered with HDR10 Plus and Wideband L1 certification for that rich viewing experience on Netflix and other streaming platforms, even though Dolby Vision playback is missing here. Similarly, I found the speakers to be not that nice. The phone thoroughly struggles to maintain proper detail and clarity in either low, mid or high frequencies, and the overall audio quality also sounds uh, muffled at full volume. When it comes to gaming phones, the camera is usually the one area which brands usually compromise. Here, Aiku has replaced the ultra wide angle sensor in favor of a 2 megapixel depth camera, which sucks for a 30,000 rupee phone. I am someone who's into street and landscape photography and I take a lot of photos with the ultra wide angle camera. So um, I really missed the ultra wide angle camera during my review period with this phone. Nonetheless, looking at the bright side, the Aiku Neo 7's main 64 megapixel sensor actually takes really good photos for its class. And I think most people are going to like its image processing too. That punchy contrast mixed with playful colors, nice sharpness and decent exposure looks quite eye-catching to be honest. Its low light shots are equally good, if not great. The onboard OIS makes sure you get sharp and well detailed photos, while there's also good contrast level and highlight control overall. Aiku does tend to lift the exposure evenly across the image in most cases, making them look somewhat unnatural. I thought turning on the night mode would fix this, but apparently not. So hopefully this gets fixed with a future update. Anyway, I am equally fond of how Aiku handles human subjects. Like uh, when it comes to portraits, the phone digitally zooms in on the subjects, mimicking a telephoto camera. And as you can see from these samples, it delivers noticeably pleasing photos with great background separation. The subject skin tone is not the most accurate here, that I will agree to, but the Aiku Neo 7's portraits still manage to stand out. Um, it's the same with selfies as well. Now moving to videos, Aiku lets you record up to 4K 60fps. But since OIS does not work here, you're gonna have to go to 4K 30fps or lower for steadier footages. And yeah, Aiku has greatly combined uh, optical stabilization with a little bit of cropping in magic to give you quite stable videos. Even exposure handling is pretty good here, but as you can see, there are noticeable jitters every now and then. But unlike the main camera, you're still stuck with 1080p 30fps recordings up front. Its field of view is fine, but IQ could have done a better job with facial skin tone as well as dynamic range and stabilization. Okay, lastly, in terms of battery, it's fantastic news. The Aiku Neo 7 has been consistently giving me around 7 to 8 hours of screen on time, even under fairly stressful usage pattern. Of course, you are not going to get similar results with continuous gaming sessions, but I find its battery backup to be more than reliable enough. And with the upgraded 120W fast charging, you can completely refill this phone in just 24 minutes. Just uh, make sure to enable the fast charging option in the settings for this. Okay, so with everything that we have discussed, it uh, pretty much goes on without saying that this is easily the best gaming phone you can buy in the mid-range segment. But what also really surprised me here is just how well balanced it is in other aspects like battery, display and cameras too. So if you're shopping for a reliable phone in general and not just a gaming phone under 30,000 Indian rupees, the Aiku Neo 7 is genuinely a good option that you can consider. 
Having said that, um, I believe IQ could have made it a 10 out of 10 by including an ultra wide angle sensor and a good set of stereo speakers. Likewise, if you look at the competition, we are going to see some exciting new products in a month or two, like the new Xiaomi 13 Lite, OnePlus Nord 3, and Samsung's Galaxy A54. These phones might not go toe to toe with iQOO in terms of performance, but they could still deliver better value overall, making the iQOO Neo 7's appeal just a bit weaker. So I really think that they should have included the ultra wide angle camera and a good speaker here, whose um, hardware component should not have cost iQOO that much. So yeah, a slightly missed opportunity. All right, everyone, so that was my full review of the new iQOO Neo 7. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari, and thank you so much for watching.